In this tutorial, I want to talk about the File Menu Toolbar. This toolbar offers many standard functions that you'll find in most Windows programs, as well as a lot of functions we'll discuss in other toolbars and keyboard shortcuts. To begin, we have the File Menu item, which gives us options for opening and saving projects. If you select New, a dialog box appears asking if you want to save your project. You can also choose to start a new project from a template. The templates offered contain specific plugins or effects or routing for the particular genre of music or task you want to start. These can come in handy as starting points if you don't know where to begin. You can also open and save projects from this menu item. The Save function saves your existing project. If you haven't saved your project yet, you will be prompted to enter a name and place for the file to be saved. From then on, if you want to save a new version, you can choose Save As, which gives you different save formats, or Save New Version, which allows you to rename your new version. This menu item also allows you to import different file formats into your project, or export your project in various file formats. You can export standard audio files, or choose Zipped Loop Package to share with others. If you choose Zipped Loop Package, a zip file will be created with your FLP file, as well as any samples and settings you've used. Again, this is great for sharing with others, or to make sure that you don't accidentally delete any samples that were used by this project. You can also choose Project Bones, which exports the project with the current settings, but no instruments or samples. Exporting the project data will create an info file that contains info about the project. We also have any recent projects listed below for quick opening. The Edit menu item gives us options for cut, copy, and paste. These functions can be used to manipulate notes, automation clips, pattern clips and blocks, and other data. These work just like normal copy, cut, and paste functions in other Windows applications. This is also where we can undo your most recent actions. Again, the amount of undo levels is dependent on your settings in the general category for your options and settings. We have options for shift left and shift right, which basically takes all of the data from the selected channel and shifts it to the right or to the left. This is useful for experimenting with different rhythms. We also have options for randomize and send to piano roll. Send to piano roll will take the data you've entered into the step sequencer and lay it out in the piano roll. We'll look more closely at this in the piano roll tutorial, but just remember that you can get more fine control over notes in the piano roll, so I usually end up using the piano roll more than the step sequencer. The randomize feature is a great way to get a project started. I'll open up the piano roll here, and we'll see what the randomize function can do. We'll choose it, and we're given options to change the parameters like scale and length. The C buttons change the random pattern, and you can choose the key and scale as well as velocity and panning parameters at the bottom. This is a really great tool to play with and is perfect for those days when you just feel stuck. You can fire up the randomization tool and in seconds come up with some new possibilities. It's also a great learning tool for people like me who don't know much about music theory. As a drummer, I have a hard time learning music in terms of harmony. I look at things in terms of rhythm, so a tool like this allows me to see and hear music that is perfectly laid out according to the different scales and keys. The next menu item contains our channel functions. This is one way to add channels to our project. When I say channels, I'm talking about the individual instruments or samplers or generators that we use to make music. When you click on the channels item, you'll be presented with a list of available instruments or generators to add to your project. This is also where we have options for cloning or deleting channels, as well as moving them up or down within the channel window. We'll take a closer look at these in a bit, but remember that the channel item contains these functions. Here is where we can also group channels or color them. This is one way to keep your project organized. Again, we'll take a closer look at these features in another video. The option for Zip Selected simply changes the selected channel into a more compact button. This is helpful if you have a lot of channels in the window at once and want to save space. You can manually unzip a zip channel by right-clicking it or selecting Unzip All to unzip any currently zipped channels. There is also an option for Restretch All, which will restretch any samples or loops to fit the current project settings. Usually, if you change the tempo, you'll be given the option to restretch the loops, but if you need to manually do it, this is where you can. In the View menu item, we have the options for the different windows, much the same as the shortcut toolbar. 
We also have the option for the new plugin picker, which can be accessed by pressing Ctrl and then F8. We also have an option for close all windows, which is very helpful if you have a bunch of VSTIs and plugins and sampler windows open. We also have options to auto arrange the windows and set the background wallpaper. You can use a web page as your wallpaper, but be careful of doing this because it can cause problems for you as you're moving around and clicking on the screen. At the bottom, we have some options to open up specific parts of the browser, such as the currently used automation and generators. This can be helpful to quickly get to places that you need without having to sift through the clutter that can sometimes build up in the browser. The next menu item is the options menu item. In this, we see we have our settings options, which we discussed earlier, as well as the project settings and project info, which we also discussed earlier. The MIDI options that we see here are for enabling different MIDI functions such as master sync and output, and below that we have some options that will be discussed in the recording toolbar tutorial. Next, we have the tools menu item, which gives us some options for searching in the browser, one-click audio recording, which we saw is also found on the extra shortcut toolbar, and some macro functions. Next, we have the Tools menu item, which gives us some options for searching in the browser, one-click audio recording, which we'll see is found in the Extra Shortcut toolbar, and some macro functions. In the macro functions, we have the ability to rename current pattern or jump to the next empty one, as well as stop sound and cancel recording. Another way to stop sound immediately is to double-click the stop button. The Switch Smart Disable for all plugins is something I would highly recommend using throughout your projects, especially large ones. What it does is turns on the Smart Disable feature for supporting plugins, which turns that particular plugin off when not in use, therefore saving you CPU. If you have a delay that is only used for one pattern in the entire song, switching Smart Disable on will make sure that that delay plugin isn't using resources until it is actually used in the song. The MIDI export macro will convert your data into a MIDI file, which can be exported and imported into other MIDI supporting programs. Finally, you can select any unused channels or purge any unused audio clips. We see options for clipboard data being saved to the browser, as well as the dump audio score function, which we've already discussed. The last item here, which is the external tools item, will allow you quick access to open an external editing program to edit the selected audio. You can set this up by clicking the folder button and finding the path to the executable file for the program you want to use. This will add it to the list and you can select your options for opening below. The last item is the help menu item and will give you options for opening the help file, as well as registration options and some external links. The last part of this panel contains your master volume and pitch controls. These control the volume and pitch for the entire project and can be automated. We also have two indicators that show us if MIDI data and sync are taking place. If you don't have any MIDI hardware attached, you will not see any activity on these icons. In upcoming tutorials, we'll discuss more of the toolbars so that you can get a general sense for what the options are that are available in FL Studio. Then it will be time to actually start putting our patterns and songs together. In a future tutorial, we'll discuss the channel window and see how it's used to select your instruments and samples and record your music. Until then, thanks again for watching.